money on the physician he said i'm telling you tonight god dropped something in my heart and that thing is called faith if i may but touch the hem of his garment i shall be healed and then she goes she goes and the unbelievers are saying what's the matter with you and then she pushing people uh, side by side and then leave her let her do what she wants and the moment she touched the hem of the garment of jesus the sickness of 12 years totally gone is by faith i said it's by faith if you're going to experience what you had never got before in this conference if you're going to climb to higher ground in this conference you must turn around all this walking by sight and saying impossible incredible unbelievable how could you think about that you had knocked that out of your heart and you know that from tonight whatever god has promised in the world it is going to be done if you're sick you're going to be healed if you're weak, it'll make you strong. If there's any attack and any affliction, everything will go in Jesus' name. And if morally you've been falling and rising, falling and rising, and the devil has told you that just, you know, you know yourself, you know that's the way you are. There's no, way, no place to have the victory. You know that from tonight, victory has come. And the faith in you will overcome in Jesus' name. And we're looking at, we're looking at Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 20. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. You know what? What Paul was doing, he was taking sides with the Lord. He stood by the side of Jesus Christ. And he said, I take what he did, I take it for myself. Identification. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live by the, in the flesh, I live by what? By the faith of the Son of God. He just says, every challenge that comes, I just say, the Son of God will live the life in me. And the faith of the Son of God is operating, is working. Everything I do now, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Second Corinthians, again, we're looking at chapter 4, verse 13. Second Corinthians, chapter 4, and we're looking at verse 13. We having the same spirit of faith. We having the same spirit of faith. What, whenever you say something like that, you say, I am having the same spirit of faith. I'm going to ask you another question. Once you say something like that, I'll say, the same spirit of faith as who? Because that's a word of comparison. We having the same spirit of faith. With who? Like who? You see, like Enoch, like Joseph, like Daniel, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like the worthies of old. I'm going to manifest the same spirit of faith. You see, the difference between those people and many people today is the difference between faith and unbelief. And as you look at all those people in the Old Testament and the New Testament, the difference between this and that is the difference between faith and unbelief. And if we can come to the point, and tonight we are coming to that point, where we can say, we have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed, therefore have I spoken. I believed, therefore, have I spoken. You believe it in your heart that Jesus is your savior. You'll say it out. You believe it in your heart that Jesus is your healer. Then you say it out. You believe it in your heart that Jesus Christ is your sanctifier. Then you say it out. You believe that Jesus is the power. He baptizes in the Holy Ghost. And you say it out. We have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe, therefore, have I spoken. We also believe, therefore, and therefore speak. Look at verse 16. For which cause will faint not. Faith cancels fainting. When you have faith in God, and you know that this is what God has said, and I know that God is going to fulfill it, you will not faint anymore. 
Because now it says, for which cause we faint not, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen. That's faith. We look not at the things which are seen. The things you are conscious of, that this was my problem, this was my weakness, this was my moral failure. Why we look not at those things which are seen? Okay, this was my addiction. You are addicted to that drug. And it's like you cannot live a day without going back to those hard drugs. But now God is going to set you free tonight. And it says, well, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, and the things, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Number one, the features of the new life in Christ. Number two, faith for the new life in Christ. Now number three, the fruit of new life in Christ. Faith reconciles so with God. Faith identifies you with Christ. Faith brings the result of Calvary, the atonement from Calvary, and it brings it to bear fruit in your life. I want to see now, when you have that relationship, the atonement of Christ has become efficacious for you. The atonement of Christ has done something in your life. What's the result? What does it produce? What's the fruit? The fruit of new life in Christ. In Romans chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 7, reading from verse 4. Wherefore, my brethren, look, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even unto him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Now that you know the features of the new life in Christ, and now you have faith, faith in Christ that produces that new life, it says, what we're going to see is the fruit. You bring forth fruit unto God. In Psalm 1, reading from verse 1, what's the fruit? Of this person who has come to know the Lord. And as you know the Lord tonight, as you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, He cleanses your sins away, he justifies you, he forgives you as if you never sinned in your life. And you have the peace of God in your heart. You rest now in Christ because of what He did for you on the cross of Calvary. What's going to be the fruit, the result of such a sin? Psalm 1, reading from verse 1 Blessed. I think you are the blessed man tonight. The blessed woman tonight. In what does that blessedness consist? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Nor seated in the siege of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law does he meditate day and night. He doesn't uh, meditate on the bad, immoral, pornographic pictures that, you know, he used you are to... be blessed with this powerful message. Our, bottom, our address is at the bottom of the, uh, of the screen. I believe you will join us one of this Sunday to worship together. Thank you. God bless you. Let us pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name and thank you, Lord, because of this powerful message. I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will touch those people who are in need of salvation, those people who are in need of prosperity, those people who are in need of healing. And the power, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, they will give testimony because of this message. In Jesus' name we pray. You are one more time, say, oh, 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 Lord. Oh, Lord. You are my 